I think it's fair to say that if you were to ask a random gamer on the street about what makes a really good game, they're probably going to tell you something like pulse pound in action, explosions, a twitch based frag fest. If that's not their hot leaf based beverage of choice, maybe they'll say a deep epic RPG with a complex and involved story. Maybe a thinker where strategy and tactics decide the fate of galaxies. Well, sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want a relaxing game, a chill out game, something you can play in the background while you catch up on your favourite podcasts, something to do while you catch that stream or finally get around to finishing that audiobook. So, with that in mind, this is Paulius and here are Watermelon Helmet's Top 5 Chill Out Games. Number 5. Elite Dangerous now, I have to admit, I wasn't really sure whether to include Elite Dangerous because its level of relaxation and chill really depends on how you play it. When you've been bounty hunting, have lost your canopy and are racing back to the nearest station before your oxygen runs out, it's not exactly going to lower your pulse rate. But if you choose to play as a trader or an explorer, this game can be downright zen. Plot a course to the arse end of nowhere, grab a big fuel tank and fuel scoop, and you've got a one-way ticket to Relaxville. It's a perfect game for those long Sunday afternoons. Stick on a movie, jump in your ship, and go scan some planets. Number 4, Agario. Now, while Elite is good for long afternoons, Agario is far more of a spur 10 minutes kind of thing. It's totally free, browser-based, and will run on just about anything. The concept is simple, get big. You start as a small ball, eat smaller things to grow, while avoid getting eaten by the bigger things. I'll be honest and say there are a million clones of this game now, and a lot of them are better, but I'm including Agario as the original. Now, play this game competitively and it can get a little bit stressful. When you're having a good run and XX Undertoker 420 XX swoops in and eats you, it can get a bit frustrating. However, relax, play it in the background with Netflix in another window and you have digital Valium. It's basically the game equivalent of doodling on a pad while on the phone. Number 3, Euro Truck Simulator 2. Now, this is a game you buy, assume it's just your guilty pleasure, and then you find out about three quarters of your Steam friends list have it as well. You start as a freelance jobbing driver, save enough money to buy your own truck, buy more trucks, hire more drivers, and start your own trucking empire. Now, this game was made for podcasts and audiobooks. In fact, I think it's the marketing blunder of the century that this game doesn't come bundled free with every Audible subscription. This game came out when simulator games tended to be weird, German, and a big steaming pile of donkey spunk. Euro Truck 2 broke the mould by looking great, being polished, and, you know, actually working. It even has internet radio support built right in, so with a bit of jiggery-pokery, listening to your favourite playlist is as simple as turning on your car stereo. With full Oculus and Vive support, I think it's incredibly safe to say that out of all of the Euro Truck simulator games out there, this is the best. Number 2. Viscera Cleanup Detail This game broke my brain. It embedded a quarter stick of dynamite in my mind and set it off while cackling like a maniac. You see, I hate cleaning. Housework is my own personal hell, but I bloody love this game. It's basically Space Janitor Simulator. Like, you know in Alien when the Xenomorph goes on a rampage and basically murders every living thing in sight? Well, in this game, you play the poor schmuck who turns up a few days later with a mop. The clue is in the title. You clean up viscera. This game has a heavy dose of dry humour, doesn't even attempt to take itself seriously and openly trolls you, with buckets that are too easy to knock over, trash containers that are only stable when they're empty, and equipment dispensers that are just as likely to dispense a severed arm onto your freshly mopped floor, rather than a nice fresh bucket of soapy water. But it's just so damned satisfying. Starting in an area that is so caked in blood and intestines, rust, alien legs and shell casings that it looks like it will never be clean again, and then clocking out when the place is so damn sparkling it would make the Silic Bang guy happy in his pants. It's as satisfying as beating Dark Souls without ever dying. 
With a fun multiplayer mode and new features being added all the time, this game should be in your Steam library. The only downside is don't play this game if you're married. Speaking from experience, playing a cleaning game when it takes a tactical nuke to your head to get you to even touch a mop in real life is a one-way ticket to divorce, Phil. Number 1. Farm Simulator 2017 Farm Simulator Farm Simulator Farm Fucking Simulator I'll be honest, I bought this game as a joke. The plan was to make a video openly mocking it. I mean, after all, who wants to get home from a hard day at work and play a game about back-breaking manual labour? No one, that's who. But I bought it, I tried it out, and the next thing I knew, it was 3am, I had to be up for work in two hours, and I still finished harvesting the damn field and drove the wheat across the map to market. This game is sheer, unadulterated brain crack. It's like it was designed to be addictive. It's just so goddamn relaxing, so goddamn satisfying, that if you're looking for something to get you off heroin, get a copy of Farming Simulator 2017. I don't even know why I love it so much. I don't know why I look at a perfectly ploughed field with the same sense of satisfaction I'd get from unwrapping my very own diamond YouTube play button. It just defies all logic and reason, and in the same week I bought Battlefield 1, a game I regard as the best Battlefield to date in my favourite series of all time, I'm choosing to spend my limited game time driving a virtual tractor around a virtual field to get virtual crops. That's all the game is. You buy a field, you cultivate the field, you sow the field, harvest the field, and then take your harvest to market. Repeat. I have spent nearly 20 hours over three days doing this and I don't know why. I just know I really, really want to. And the scary part is I haven't even got any animals yet. Once I do that, I may as well just wave goodbye to my family because I will never see them again. So, if you've had enough of the world, put on some headphones, fire up a podcast, jump in a tractor and say goodbye to your family because you will never see them again. So that was Watermelon Helmet's top five relaxing chill out games. If you think there's any I've missed, any you would have put higher or lower, please let me know. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.